Special Podcast. After School Special Podcast. After School Special Podcast. After School Special Podcast. Hello, Latchkey Kids and Broken Homies. We're back. After School Special Podcast. Double D mm-hmm. staff man. We're in the building. We're talking about the Inhumanoid show from the 80s. So after doing some research about this show, it really grabbed my attention because obviously I was a little kid, a little baby in the 80s. But if I was my brother's age and if you're listening, you're in your mid 40s, early 40s, you might have caught this show very briefly in the 80s. And John's going to do the initial setup of how this show came about in the 80s, 1986 to be exact. Yes, that's correct. So The Inhumanoids was a 13 episode Western animation show by Sumbo Entertainment. Sumbo was known at that time for different shows such as Hasbro's G.I. Joe, The Great Space Coaster, and The Brothers Flub, which is something I think came on Nickelodeon. They also did The Transformers and Jim. You remember Jim? The rock star. I was looking that girl. up. I do not remember that. So that came out at the same time as this show, The Inhumanoids, right? But yeah, it was around 1988, around almost around the same time yeah. that the show came out. They also did the My Little Ponies movie and G.I. Joe movie. So I do remember watching a lot of this stuff, but The Inhumanoids was something I didn't get into because obviously I was born in 1985. So. I had no idea about this show because I was in my infancy, probably your infancy. one year old. <laughs> yeah, I was one year old, but I came into discovery of the Inhumanoids by accident. I was on a server on Mastodon and somebody had it as their logo. And I was very curious to see what it was and then i looked it up on youtube and i was fascinated by the horror and the way it was created as a kid's cartoon well let's talk um, about the name in general though john because usually not to cut you off but i did so (laughs) but what's weird about (laughs) it when you said the inhumanoids i immediately thought oh okay that's the heroes of the show usually when they name a show after like the characters it's the hero. So when I researched this and found out, oh, no, the Inhumanoids are the bad guys. I'm like, oh, that's different. Yeah. So this was kind of odd because it's all about the villains and how the villains come into effect. So I thought that that was really fascinating. And the Inhumanoids didn't start out as a TV show. It was a TV movie, I believe, at first. And then it went into episodes. So the first episode was actually a movie. And then it built off of that. So it was a toy line by Hasbro that was created by Sumbo Entertainment. The storyline was a group of scientists known as the Earth Corps who discover an enormous monster by the name of Decompose. And he was encased in amber. (laughs) Yeah, he was encased in amber and was found in Big Surf. So that's out here in California. So it's basically the start of the Jurassic Park movie. Pretty much. Yeah. Spielberg's amber. And then they just. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where that came from. So then unknown to the core, Decompose is one of a race of horrors known as the Inhumanoids who were sealed under the earth long ago. Another of these abominations is Tendril. So Tendril is discovered and freed by a corrupt business executive. And Tendril, in turn, goes and frees Decompose. Joining with their leader, Metlar, the Inhumanoids are again a menace to the world. 
With the help of the mutors, the elemental beings who imprison the inhumanoids in the first place, the Earth Court step up to put down the monsters again. So that was the storyline. You're dealing with the inhumanoids. The Earth Corps are these team of scientists, and they're trying to battle for Earth. They're they're out there trying to, to defeat these monsters who all have different powers. Obviously, decompose could touch something and it would decompose. But along with that backstory, I thought I read somewhere where these characters actually battle another group of monsters a thousand years before over supremacy of the earth and they lost so it was like the surface world against the inhumanoids but they lost they got driven back and then Mm -hmm. a thousand years later the humans with the scientists earth Earth, core yeah the earth core the earth core they um buried Mm -hmm. them and this is where we're at now in the story so is that true too or is that did i well the elementals are the ones who battled the elementals yes uh, yeah, they battled the Inhumanoids and trapped them where they couldn't get back out. But they were monsters, too. But it too. was Earth Corps. Yeah, they were monsters, too. They were good monsters. They were like guardians. Okay. So what ends up happening is the Earth Corps digs up Decompose as their first discovery. As they're doing that, they don't realize that Tendril is coming to free Decompose because this business exec who's on the bad side wants to cause chaos and all kinds of nonsense it's always some shit man so, just leave the earth alone damn like yeah yeah we, we got enough they so, always got to do that yeah it's that's always the situation every you know? time i mean it, and you know it's yeah. black history month by the way you know you, you know it's my caucasian brothers they always got to go somewhere they ain't supposed to be like damn just <laughs> we, we just should alone. yeah i didn't see anybody of color on there but i wasn't looking for exactly. that i was just exactly that looking at the show but back to in humanoids the show in its day had a lot of unfriendly violence and it was the source of many scares because the show even though it was a children's show was really dark in how it was presented and i mean it was a lot of violence it was a lot of obviously mutations and decomposing of bodies and things like that and the 80s was wild yeah man. i just so, was you know say, well, the crack epidemic yeah. the yeah the cocaine yeah. was coming through but i was going to say if i was more aware of this in the 80s i would have loved this show i think if my brother yeah. was aware of it i know he would have loved this he's older than me by six years so i didn't get a chance yeah. to ask him but yeah this this is right up our alley monsters and scary stuff yeah. yeah and the thing was more importantly it was an unusual kid show for its use of good subplots strong pacing and suspense for that time that had to have been benchmarks for cartoons but this one hit all the marks for that but it was still a horror cartoon and it only had 13 like i said episodes so it didn't go far The toy line that came out with it ended up failing because they were too expensive for parents to buy. And again, the show only lasted 13 episodes. This was part of Super Sunday, they called it, which is weird Mm -hmm. because it's like usually cartoons came on on Saturday. So did it actually come on Sunday or did it come on Saturday? It was part of Mm -hmm. four Mm -hmm. other shows part of that super sunday and somehow the shows were all connected right because you said it started off as a movie but then they kind of cut it up into chapters so these yeah yeah so this show was like a block of shows on super sunday and they presented it like chapters so in humanoids Mm -hmm. got seven minutes and i think the other shows did the same type of thing and then at the end of the whole series they were gonna like stitch it all together the humanoids and make it into a movie but what they right right so is that what am i right about that i think you're correct well it so says the introductory it, movie it, was cut yeah. into five separate 22 minute episodes composed right. of three shorts a piece yeah it's a, rather a slate of six to seven minute shorts that aired as part of a collective super sunday half hour block alongside other marvel sumbo series like jim and the holograms 
Bigfoot and the Muscle Machines and Robotics. Although Bigfoot had only nine episodes, the other shows ran to 15 episodes, telling a complete story across the numerous installments, which were later edited together to form movies that were released on video. Out of the four, Jim proved to be the most popular and was eventually made into an ongoing series that lasted 65 episodes. And I didn't know that. I remember Jim and the Holograms, and I think they did a live action movie on Jim and the Holograms. Around the time they were doing Josie and the Pussycats, I do believe they did a live action Jim. But they were um, like connecting but, these characters like all together in these shows. It wasn't just mm -hmm. in humanoids. They had their characters and then this, you know, but they all connected. And I remember reading that. That was kind of cool. Like this, the lead scientist, his code name is Hooker. <laughs> oh, so yeah. you had, you had Herc Armstrong. Yeah. Sandra Shore, Derek Bright, and there's somebody named Dirty Beggar. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. After these messages, we'll be right back. Hey, babies, you're liking the show? Well, thanks. Leave a five-star rating and a comment, please. Do you want to see the guys' faces? Well, they got YouTube videos. You can watch this podcast on any major platform you listen to. Rate five stars and comment. Thanks, babies. All right, so we can talk about the characters. Okay. Uh, so Dr. Herman Herc Armstrong, a.k.a. Hooker, the leader of Earth Corps, his embarrassing first name, he prefers to be addressed by his nickname, correcting an interviewer <laughs> on the first episode. And then you had Dr. Derek Erickson. He designed the Earth Corps' equipment. He ended up married to a film actress named Stella Blaze. And he's very clear about how smart he is and how great his creations are. Then you got Dr. Edwards, the fist. <laughs> <laughs> so, that sounds like a great for, boxer name, the fist. Yeah, yeah, the fist. He despises Hector Ramirez with a passion to the point that he destroys the Earth Corps television set every time Ramirez is on. <laughs> Digger designed the equipment, but Augur, his nickname is Augur, builds it and makes improvements. He destroys a TV set by throwing his shoes at it, reporting news that irritates him. And later episodes, it has a net set up in front of the TV. So there you go. You got that. Dr. Jonathan Martin Slattery, Liquidator. Yes. He was a new age retro hippie, a bit of one, particularly in the episode when the team splitting up to investigate various leads. He went to check out the forest where Decompose was found to look into the quote unquote vibes. <laughs> man it was getting yeah. blowed <laughs> yeah 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 fighting so, monsters uh, getting blowed yes so then you got Sandra Shore she was a part of Earth Corps she was Miss Navigator bails out and defunded Earth Corps with her own money and joins the team she's the only female hero in the series kind of like the Smurfs she agreed to bankroll Earth Corps after the government funding withdrawal under the conditions she allowed to join the team. A figure of her was planned as part of the second wave of Toy Line, which was canceled when the first wave didn't sell because they were so expensive. She gets zombified by Decompose, but eventually returned to normal. And that's the episode I came in on when I saw it. She's so gross <laughs> when he touches her. I was like, this cannot be for kids. Like, this was just grotesque. And then you had other people like Bradley Joseph, Arm Brewster, Saber Jet. There was supposed to be a toy of him, but nothing happened. He is strongly implied to be the same character as Ace from G.I. Joe, a real American hero due to having the same name. He ended up critically injured and is implied that his armor was built around his body by Earth Corps to save his life. As stated 
above, he is supposed to be the same character as Ace, but noticeably different from how he was depicted in G.I. Joe. And then you had this guy, Antali Kiev, a.k.a. Tank Master, a.k.a. Tank. Quoted as, I work alone, a former chess champion, didn't get a toy developed. After going against the Soviet's plan to flood Infernak because it would have blown the whole planet in half, he's declared a traitor by the secret police so he can't return to the USSR. The humanoids are Metlar, Decomposed, Tendril, Gargoyle, and Sissa Slither. It's two S's. <laughs> Sissa Slither, yeah. Slither obviously is a snake in humanoid. Gargoyle is a Cyclops in humanoid. Tendril is pretty much like a tentacle type of inhumanoid. Decompose is a giant dinosaur-like undead creature who can turn any living thing he touches into a loyal zombie. He can bring back corpses, even skeletal ones, to serve him. He and Tendril are Metlar's main lackeys. He Literally, he can grab his foe and turn them into loyal undead slaves, and the dead <laughs> he raises serve him no matter who they are. His voice was done by Chris Latta. So Chris Latta, I heard that name before. I'm trying to see. Well, what struck me after researching this and looking at some of the episodes, like the artwork was pretty cool. I thought yeah, this was based yeah. off a comic book initially, but it was actually the reverse. They made the cartoon first. They made the series in hopes of making a direct-to-video Right. Home video movie. And then they later came out with the comics. 1987, they came out with the comic. But yeah. I thought because of the like the dark shadows and the cartoon and the gore and the content of it. I, yeah, I just knew it's based off a comic. But no, that wasn't the case. But that's what struck me. I love the artwork in this. Yeah, it's funny. It was in reverse, but both mediums didn't succeed. The toy line was too expensive. And then the episodes were only 13 and they didn't feel that it needed to go any further. Honestly, John, so, like after looking at it, it really was ahead of its time. Because I think if it came out now and it was like on a show like Adult Swim or. A, yeah. If it yeah, was like or on adults. A, yeah, it would be great. Yeah. And it was like catered towards teenagers or people older. But yeah, they were trying to put it in the child's block for kids and it's like no man like kids like me would have loved it but i yeah. don't think the parents were going for that especially on oh, no. super sunday uh, most people yeah. are going to church so yeah, yeah yeah that's ridiculous to even put it in that timeline on sunday because nobody wants to get into that like that i forgot the mutors so you had the redwoods which were like tree type beings the granites which were rocks obviously and magna core was like a lava type being and they were the ones that in prison the inhumanoids the first time so there was a short-lived marvel comic that was with magna core but it didn't last that long so there's that they and, probably should have uh, came out with the comic first and then did this but yeah but did you see that kevin smith in 2009 was rumored to be writing a reboot of the Inhumanoids. I didn't see that. I didn't. You know what? Kevin Smith will be the right person to do it. They said in 2010 that, well, he said it, that he was not pinning a script for the Inhumanoids, but right. he said he liked it. He was a fan of it. And he said it was a killer series back in the day. And it was a shame that it didn't last longer. But yeah, I could definitely see him doing that. Yeah, definitely would have loved to have seen his vision of it you know who else i could see doing this guillermo del toro Ooh, yeah yes yeah i i could see that they could do something with it especially like i said the name is the bad guy is like yeah that's so that's kind of cool in its way and i like the idea yeah. that i don't know there's so many ways they can go with it like they could right almost paint the humans as the bad guys if they really wanted to. Right, right. Yeah, that would be a good way to go. And you know that the genre for this was not just action and horror. It was also a kaiju genre. So, okay. you know, like in the same realm as Godzilla and all the monsters in yeah. the MonsterVerse, it was a kaiju series. It was created by Flint Dill, written by Larry Parr, and directed by Ray Lee. Uh, oh, no so shit. So there's that. It was also 
produced by Marvel because you know Marvel Productions back then had their hand in a lot of those animated series. So they should still um, have the rights to that then, you would think. They might, yeah. So Marvel Production is now known as New World Animation. Oh, okay, I so, know that. Yeah, because I remember the Marvel Production because they did Muppet Babies, and every time oh. Muppet Babies would go off, they had that Spider-Man on top of the logo for Marvel Productions live action spider-man at that time oh, i didn't know that damn yeah yeah they had their hands in all that after these messages we'll be right back hey guys as always you can catch this podcast on any major platform you listen to podcasts please make sure to rate us five stars and comment on how you're liking the show after school special podcast you know that hard goodness that you get the next day oh yummy from a day old donut at dougie's after school special podcast no 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 <laughs> that's my childhood right there mother when did that come out podcast comes out every friday friday friday, friday, friday. friday. You want to talk about the action figures real quick? Sure. So the action figures, like I said, were extremely expensive for parents to buy. Well, the, the thing about it, the human characters, the heroes, they had the action figures. They were like six inches, very small heads, not much definitions. Yeah. But the monsters, the monster action figures, it was like 14 inches. Uh... Yeah, 14 inches. And they all had a release date of 1986 by Hasbro. And they were really detailed. The six inch figures, which were the Earth Core, were just chunky looking yeah. characters. There well, was no detail to them. Well, they had a glow and a light feature. And they all had like an action power that they could do, apparently. And, you know, Glow in the Dark was big back then. Mm. Any action figure yeah. or, or toy. Oh, I was, a, I was a sucker for that. Me too, man. Like, I didn't realize until I got older that if the longer it's in the sun, the better it'll glow in the dark at night. If, oh, the, I didn't if know you, that. Yeah, yeah. So if you have it out in the sun for a long time, it'll take all that energy. And then at night, it'll glow brighter. Oh, no shit. Yeah. Well, yeah. to wrap it up, this is going to be a short episode but the Inhumanoids was short-lived anyway. But do you yeah. have any final thoughts on the uh, show? You know what, man? I would like to see this one get a second chance. Like, bring it back from the dead. Yeah. I really would. You brought up a good idea because if Cartoon Network was still doing Toonami, yeah. oh my that, that would be good. So I see it in the same realm as Dragon Ball, and I see it in the same realm as a lot of the older shows that Toonami had on during that time, like Thundercats, Silverhawks. I think this one could stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with those shows as well. So I would love to see it. They don't have to revamp it, but just cast the original series, see how it goes, and yeah. then make changes later on. I would love that. To backtrack, just a full summary, this show was part of the Super Sunday block. It was done in chapters seven minute chapters along with another block of cartoons of that time with the hope of spawning a standalone because that's what ultimately what they wanted they wanted a full standalone cartoon based on mm -hmm, the in mm -hmm. inhumanoids and of course right. with the memorabilia the toys and the comic books but it just never worked i think it was ahead of its time john agrees and i don't know what do you guys think latchkey kids Follow us on After School Special Podcast, the website, After School Special Podcast on Instagram, After School SPE3 on Twitter, After School mm -hmm. Special 3 on TikTok, and listen to us wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Double D, yep. that's Staff Man. This was in Humanoids. Short lived. Look it up. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we hope to hear from you soon. Yeah. Once again, Instagram Live on Fridays between 6 and 6.30 Eastern Time. Check us out. Look out for the new episodes. Listen to the old ones. Peace. Later. Hey, everyone. It's Aaron from After School Special Podcast. Like what you hear so far? But don't forget 
to subscribe and download the show on whatever platform you get your podcasts. And just a friendly reminder, we have new episodes out every Friday. Thanks for listening, everyone. You, you know it's my Caucasian brothers. They always got to go somewhere they ain't supposed to be. Like, damn.